In this demonstration, we're going to take a look at the ArcGIS Pro catalog pane and uh, describe some of the uses of the catalog pane and uh, just give you kind of an overview of what to expect uh, when you are working with the catalog pane. So the catalog pane uh, by default in ArcGIS Pro will show up on the right hand side uh, of your project. Uh, it is roughly analogous to Arc Catalog uh, for ArcGIS desktop users, but it has a much more limited scope uh, in, uh, in what it provides. Uh, the catalog pane in ArcGIS Pro is, is essentially a listing of all the resources that have been added to the current project. So I'm working on a project called Imported Crime. Uh, and so what you're seeing here is just resources for that particular project. Now going back to Arc Map days, Arc Catalog was much more open-ended. So it allowed you to kind of uh, explore right, uh, in a more open-ended approach uh, to look for you know, data and maps and, and things of that sort. Uh, but the catalog pane in ArcGIS Pro has a much more limited scope. Uh, there are three tabs. Uh, the project tab is going to be the default. You also have a portal tab and a favorites tab. Uh, now, earlier versions of ArcGIS Pro had some additional tabs here, uh, but if you're working with a newer version of Pro starting with, uh, you know, roughly 2.6 or later, uh, you should see only these three tabs. Uh, so we'll start with the project tab, which is where most people spend the, the majority of their time. Um, uh, what you're seeing here then is just a list of different types of resources. So uh, any maps that are part of the project will show up here. You can see we have a number of different uh, maps that are part of this particular project. Now this particular project only has 2D maps, but keep in mind that any ArcGIS Pro project can have 2D maps, 3D maps, and custom base maps as well. So you may, uh, you know, certainly may see different um, icons here that represent those different types of maps. And any of these can be opened right, just by right-clicking and selecting open or by double-clicking uh, to open the map as needed. Uh, and I should also explain that all the resources that you find in the catalog pane, all that information gets written to your project file, your .aprx file. Uh, and then when the project file is opened uh, in future versions of ArcGIS Pro, uh, that information populates into that catalog pane. Under toolboxes, uh, this is uh, any toolboxes that have been added for your project. You should always have at least one default uh, toolbox. Anytime you create a project in ArcGIS Pro, it's automatically going to create a default toolbox that goes along with that project. Uh, so you, know, you may or may not have any content in that project uh, for your toolboxes, but you should at least have a toolbox there for your, any customizations. Toolboxes are used primarily for uh, customizations, automation customizations, so Python scripts, custom Python scripts, uh, models that you may be building in Model Builder. That type of resource can be saved into these toolboxes and then they're saved with a project and you can export them out if needed. Now, the rest of the content can vary a little bit, so I'm not going to go through every item here, but um, uh, I'll go through the ones that I think are most important. Uh, your database connections. You should have at least one database connection uh, with the same name as the project. So anytime you create a project, in addition to that toolbox that you get that's created, you'll also get a geodatabase that's created as part of the project. It's stored with uh, the project structure. So you can see I have a project called Imported Crime. I also have a, a toolbox called Imported Crime and a database, geodatabase called Imported Crime. Those are all part of the default structure of creating a new project. Now you can add additional uh, geodatabase connections here. You can see I've added one for Bell County. Each geodatabase connection, of course, can have its own set of content. If you need to define a new database connection, you simply right click on databases, and select Add Database, and then you navigate to you know, whatever geodatabase it is that you want to add, hit OK, and then it becomes a new item. Now, once you've added a geodatabase connection, it is very easy then to add uh, layers from those geodatabases directly to your maps. So for example, let's say I wanted to create a new map that um, started with some base data here. We'll just go with uh, like parcels, right? So I could right click on parcels, select add to new map. And what that's gonna do is it's gonna create a new map and then automatically add that parcel layer to the map. And it will also have a default. Uh, you can see it has a default uh, base map that gets added. And then if I look up in my map section, you can see that, uh, and this one's called map one. It'll give a default name anytime you're creating a new map. It's just called map one here. You can change the name if you need to. And from there, you can add your additional content, right? You can drag and drop the content. Uh, you can right click and select add to current map. 
you can drag and drop to the contents pane. All right, and then of course, and then, then from there you go into the, you know, adding or changing your symbology as needed. That's kind of beyond the focus of what we're doing here. So those are your database connections. Uh, same thing applies to other types of connections, folder connections. Um, you'll get a default folder connection here as well, but folder connections are usually defined for situations where you're wanting to add things like shape files or perhaps uh, spreadsheet information, uh, maybe some uh, image files that you may be adding for your layouts, right? But that's, uh, that's there for adding in your folder connections. Your styles, right? Anytime you create a new project in ArtJS Pro, it automatically load, loads certain styles. The styles primarily are used with symbology. So for example, when you left click a layer to symbolize that layer, it brings up this symbol, symbology gallery. And all the content that you see here is coming from that's those style files, right? So if I look over in catalog, you'll see that I have 2D and 3D styles, right? And that kind of goes back to what you're seeing here in your Symbology Gallery. So there's the 2D and the 3D. It's a pretty limited set of styles uh, that you get with a project. And ArcGIS Pro actually ships with a lot of additional styles that you can use. And uh, to, so if you want to add additional styles to your project, you can right click, select Add, uh, Add System Style, and then from there, you'll get a listing of all the styles that ship with ArcGIS Pro. And you can see it doesn't, you know, it loads a, quite a limited set here. So you do have the ability to go in here and add additional um, styles as needed, uh, both 2D styles, 3D styles, colors and color schemes. Um, not all of these styles apply just to symbology. Uh, there are some style files that, uh, for example, you can add for different color ramps for uh, north arrows and scale bars that you may add to your layout. So not all of these apply directly to Symbology, uh, but many of them do. Right? And so this is just a source for additional uh, Symbology that you may want to add into your projects. Your layouts will show up right under uh, the layout section. Keep in mind in ArcGIS Pro, of course, you can create as many layouts as you want. Right? And so you can load these layouts just by double clicking. That'll load up the layout that is then uh, added to your project, or it's already part of your project, but it loads it up into the view. And each time you load something into the view, it, it, it you know adds a tab across the top here that allows you to very quickly add or shift between the, the different types of, of views. Uh, there's other content here as well. Uh, you'll see things like notebooks. That's a Python notebooks. Uh, we talked about folders, locators. Right, if you're adding in address matching types of services. You can add things like tasks, which are new ways of automating things in Pro. So this isn't necessarily a, uh, a full extensive listing of everything that can go into a project, but these are the main things that you would add to a project and kind of how you work with it. These are searchable as well, so you can search for different uh, items if you need to. And that's all found under the Project tab. Now there's other tabs here as well, including a Portal tab. The portal tab goes by however you've logged in, right? So based on however, you, based on how you've logged in, and that can be ArcGIS Online or it could be a portal connection. Uh, what you'll see here is a, a set of buttons across the top. The default being my content. So this is any content that uh, I have created and uh, uploaded to ArcGIS Online. Um, so there are a lot of different uh, things that you can do here, you know, in terms of accessing content that you've created that can be maps, it can be data layers, uh, uh, other things as well. Um, and, and these are searchable as well. So there's a search function here. There's a filter function that allows you to filter what you're seeing uh, in different ways. I'm not going to go into a whole lot of detail here, but there's a, you know functions here for filtering out uh, your content. Uh, other buttons include my favorites. Uh, I don't think I've added anything here, but you can add portal content to your favorites that could be data maps you know things of that sort applications the third button is the my groups button uh, this is any uh, groups that um, that you may have been assigned to either through ArcGIS online or portal i don't currently have any groups that i've been assigned to but the way these work is that uh, either through your portal or through ArcGIS online you can be assigned to groups with multiple individuals and then when somebody assigns content to the group, it, it naturally filters down into the individuals that have been assigned to those groups. Other buttons here, right? Um, there is a, an ArcGIS Online button. This is publicly available content provided through ArcGIS Online. So this is any content that theoretically anybody in the world who's got an ArcGIS Online content and has created content and shared that content in a public fashion could show up here. Right? And this is searchable as well. 
So you can search for different uh, items here as needed. Now keep in mind, this is, you know, this content can in theory be coming from anywhere. Uh, you know, it's nice to be able to access this content, but you also have to keep in mind that you don't have any control over this content. So it could be here today, gone tomorrow. So I wouldn't necessarily rely on this content for, uh, you know, for things that you're doing as part of your projects that uh, you really need access to. Uh, nevertheless, it's, you know, it's, it's a great source of content that you can add to your projects and you can add these you know, to, to your maps just like you can any other layers you know, just by dragging and dropping. So you can see in this case I've added USA Current Wildfires. As you mouse over these, you can kind of get a sense of where they're coming from. You can see this is an Esri live feed. You can see the path. Last time it was modified. So you can kind of get a sense of where this is coming from. And, uh, you know, this particular web map, this is a, an individual owner, right? So you can't necessarily always be confident that these layers are up to date, nor can you be confident that they are always going to be present, right? Because in, in theory, somebody could certainly take these down at any time. Now, this last button on the right-hand side, the Living Atlas button, uh, this button will display to you Esri curated content. So this one uh, tends to be more reliable um, in terms of the content that's provided. Uh, these are data sets um, and maps that either Esri has created on their own and are hosting and managing, or that they are working with some third party to, to host. Uh, so these data sets tend to be much more reliable. Uh, in, in, you know, if you need to use these data sets as part of your projects, they tend to uh, they tend to be pretty reliable in terms of being able to, you know, be able to count on them being there, number one, and then uh, being updated on, on some sort of uh, regular basis as well. All right, so that is, uh, that's the portal tab. Favorites tab is an interesting section. Uh, the favorites tab allows you to add connections to different items. So you can see I've added a, a geodatabase connection and I've added a style, a particular style that I want to add. What this does is anytime you add uh, content to the favorites tab, uh, that content becomes available to you in all projects going forward, um, which is nice, right? And a lot of times, you know, when you work for organizations, you find yourself each time you create a project having to add the same content over and over again. So you're, you know, most of the time you're connecting to the same geodatabase, the same folders over and over again, or you're wanting to add the same style files to your projects. And you know, you have to do that manually uh, unless you come up with an alternative way of doing that. And one of the alternative ways of doing that is to add a favorites. And so any of the favorites that you add here, and that can be anything under add item, that can be folders, databases, toolboxes, server connections, styles. So there are a lot of options here for adding uh, items to your favorites. And, and again, the big benefit here is that once you add an item to your favorites, it becomes available to you. Uh, spanning across all projects that you use going forward, which can be a huge time saver, uh, you know, in different ways. All right, now there are other options here as well. There's a menu, uh, there's a show pop-ups uh, that you can hide and show. I'm not exactly sure why they put that there, but anyway. Uh, you can switch to the catalog view, all right? That is an alternative way of viewing your catalog content. And then there's a refresh button. Catalog pane, like any other pane, uh, is you can make it larger make it smaller. Of course, you can pick it up and drag it around to different locations. As you start dragging, keep in mind, of course, that you're going to want to drop it at some point. And, you know, the location that you drop it, you need to drop it on one of these little uh, bars and then you can kind of move it to a different location. So you do have a lot of control over these right, as far as uh, making them larger, smaller, changing location on the interface. All right, that is all I need to cover for now. I appreciate you joining me and we'll see you next time.